Welcome, Drew. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so, if you could share with our um, attendees, people who have never been, say, for example, to Boise, Idaho, what is the Tree Fort Music Festival? Uh, Tree Fort is a multi day art and culture festival. Uh, we started out as primarily focused on music when we were planning the event. But um, even in that first year, we, and, and in each subsequent year, we've been approached by members of the community that were passionate about particular creative uh, disciplines. So what started out pretty narrow as a music festival quickly grew into a yoga festival, writing festival, uh, and so as the years have gone on, we've added what we call forts, which in addition to having over 400 bands at the festival, we have forts that bring beer and dance and children's activities and writing workshops and technology and uh, even skateboarding. We have a, a fort called Skate Fort. So what we, what we do, what we started to do uh, pretty focused on music quickly grew into this uh, community event that really just highlights everything that Boise is passionate about. So you started in 2012, nine years ago. You're the first B Corp certified festival in 2015. Cultural ambassadors for the city of Boise, 2015 through 2017. So it's five days. Uh, and I was looking at some of the statistics, about 42% of the bands and the activities are really focused on locals, 25% um, regional, 28% national, and 5% international. So those are actually the, the people that come and play and be part of this immersive experience, correct? Yeah, the, the artists themselves. The artists themselves. And then this year, you guys added... Um, art fort. Yes, yeah, so we've done, we've had multiple programming tracks that have focused on different forms of what you, what you dub art. You know, we've had muralists and we've had dancers and, and what we did this year was we said, you know, we really need some cohesive way for attendees, especially non-local attendees to find and engage with the this programming so we created so art for has technically been around for a while we just created the label um mainly as a way for people to more easily track the events uh online and in their festival app so that they could mm -hmm. that they so they could add the events to their schedule and more clearly kind of understand um, how everything fit into the rest of the programming at the festival. So Art Fort has technically been around for quite a while, but we just now uh, gave it a, made it official, I guess. And from building the creative ecosystem perspective, uh, how has Tree Fort done that? Well, from the beginning, the the reason we created, the reason we started down this path was we wanted Boise's music scene to be richer than it was. Mm -hmm. We felt like Boise was being overlooked by touring acts. We felt like the local musicians needed more support. There needed to be more opportunity for people who wanted to be creatives to, to do so locally, to not have to move to LA mm -hmm. or Portland or Seattle. Uh, so that was really what what created the idea that led to Tree Fort, um, and and our thinking was, you know, if we bring these national and international touring acts that attendees want to see, and we pair them, we put them on stages with local performers, that will elevate uh, individuals, individual attendees' awareness of of our local talent. And so as the festival has grown into other disciplines, beer, yoga, uh, writing, et cetera, 
um, we've tried to keep that mentality going with all of our uh, areas of programming is pair local talent with regional, national, international talent so that we can showcase Boise, not just as a great place to go have a party for five days, but show off the talented individuals that that make Boise their home. You can have it all with um, so much of the technology connecting us these days. Uh, you, you can live and work and play in an area that you love. And I, I feel that you guys are, are, what I heard you say is that you're using it for uh, obviously talent retention as well as talent mm-hmm. attraction, maybe a little bit of that as well. Really. Well, yeah, and sp- I mean, specifically with like technology is um, podcasting has become huge, uh, a huge yes. piece of content at the festival over the last several years. So um, that's something that's just recently emerged as like, hey, you know, there's there's this uh, new field of. I don't know, I guess you could, you could call podcasting so many different things, but it's kind of journalism and it's creative Mm -hmm. expression. And, um, but that we've seen huge, huge interest in podcasts visiting and, and as a piece of content in and of itself. So um, that for us, like, especially in terms of being able to live anywhere and and do your creative, uh, your, your form of creative expression, like, podcasting has just come out of nowhere as like one of our most popular uh, fields now. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. The, um, as far as when you think about the brand of tree fort and I know that, you know, the, the, um, w- when you look at your website, it's, what is it? Two tree limbs. Yeah, the 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 sticks crossing each other. The sticks crossing each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that the brand, or can you share with me? Really, I think it's a lot more than that. Uh, sure. But, but talk a little bit um, about um, the creation of that brand visually, and then really the the larger, more encompassing brand of Treeport. Yeah. So initially. Um, which is, I think, the case with a lot of companies, uh, we started with the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we knew we wanted something playful. Mm-hmm. And we knew we wanted something that would engage with Boiseans. Um, and uh, I don't exactly remember the the moment the light bulb went off and we chose Tree Fort, but we did have those kind of guiding factors in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh and then a, a big part of our brand has been sort of maintaining the the original vibe of what we were aiming for out of the festival, which was local, friendly, community focused. Uh, and very early on, we got in touch with a local illustrator named James Lloyd, who designed our logo and does all of the very unique little character illustrations that you see on our merch, on our website, uh, on our app. He, he is pretty prolific in terms of all the visual uh, creative elements that, that are recognizable as tree fort. Now uh, it's his art is almost synonymous with tree fort. So that was a big part of our brand. Um, and then our marketing director, Megan, mm-hmm. Uh, combined with a talented team of, of marketing and graphic design folks, um, sort of take the, the vision of the brand and the art by James and then put it all together into every manifestation of the Tree Fort brand that you see on social media or um, in like the tree fort videos we put out every year, you know, Megan and her team are really the, the uh, wizards behind taking the idea and the imagery of tree fort and then crafting it. Uh, Cause, cause tree fort, like we have so many brand elements. We kind of have an outsized amount of brand elements uh, compared to probably a, a similar business 
a, a business similarly sized to us just because so much of what we do has to tell a story in order to get someone interested in the festival and to buy a ticket. And so we just create massive amounts of, of branding that, you know, oftentimes it's like we use it a year and then we rebrand and we decide to go a different direction the next mm-hmm. year and we just have to constantly keep things fresh. Uh, and so it's a ton of work for James and Megan and, and Megan's team, but you know, it's, it's kind of what makes us who we are now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like you to share with us um, what's going on with WeFunder. So you guys uh, were going to have the um, event in 2020 and postponed it once. And then I think twice. Yeah, so we were going to have the event this past March Mm -hmm. uh, postponed because of the COVID threat. Mm -hmm. Um, Postponed it six months to this September. Thought that was plenty of time, but, you know, what has kind of become a running joke now is, you know, 2020 happened and suddenly six months in, we realized we couldn't probably do this event at all in 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, So we postponed it another year to September, 2021. Um, And like any business that's sort of having to get through these times that put us in a real pinch because we needed, uh, we needed to keep up, you know, we have, we're a relatively small team, but we wanted to pay, we wanted to keep people paid. We wanted to be able to, Exactly. Keep people, you know, keep people around. So we had our talent available for the festival next year. Um, And we also saw it as an opportunity because we're actually a pretty small festival budget wise. And so we didn't need a ton of money in order to swing through the, you know, in in order to swing through 2020 and kind of slingshot into 2021. So we thought, well, Hey, let's, let's try to do some creative fundraising and really position ourselves to not only come back, but maybe come back really aggressively and, and in a way that kind of establishes us as a next gen festival. And like, you know, some of these festivals that had to cancel, they might not ever come back. So, Mm -hmm. so also position ourselves to provide a festival experience for people that might not have, the, you know, the, the the other festival. I won't name any, but but might not have another festival to go to in their area anymore. Mm-hmm. So uh, what we did was we decided to go with this online uh, crowdfunding platform called WeFunder, um, and what they do is they they work with you to actually um, sell. SEC certified shares of your company to mm-hmm. individuals for small, uh, small investment. And what I mean by small is like, it's small compared to a Silicon Valley startup. It's not small for us. It's a lot of money for us, but um, it's just a drop in the bucket compared to what you might see at a unicorn, a Silicon Valley unicorn race. Um, so we funder lets us raise a, uh, little over a million dollars. So that's, that's what we're trying to do right now is we're offering some perks and shares of tree fort to fans and anyone else that's interested in our mission and what we're trying to accomplish in 2021. And uh, so far we've had really good response and we're going to continue a little bit further with our crowdfunding. Um, and then we're actually going on sale for the 2021 festival on October 1st. So we're already in a good enough position with where we're at with WeFunder that we know 2021 is comfortably within our sights. And so we're already getting the ball rolling for next year. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited. I have n- n- never been to Tree Fort, but I did invest in Tree Fort. And oh, great. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, for me right now, it was, um, it was a big deal. And, um, and, and so, uh, 
I understand that it's, you know, there's, um, there's debt, there's equity, there's, you know, the SEC, SEC filings that you guys all had to go through. Um, so this is preferred stock uh, with, without dividends, correct? Yeah, so that's what we're at right now. We, mm-hmm. we don't want to, we, we really wanted to make sure that that people knew what they were getting into when they invested with WeFunder. Mm-hmm. This is a this is a community investment. This is a this is a a, a project that uh, the 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 example we've used the most is um, the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers issue yes. shares to yes. their fans. Yes, their fans purchase the shares. The shares aren't traded on any market. The shares can only be sold back to the team. There's really no, there's, you're investing because you're passionate about that team and you want to have a keepsake that you maybe pass down to your kids and you take your kids to Packers games and it becomes a point of pride. And that's really how we wanted to put it to people in this initial stage. The benefit of actually being uh, shares of preferred stock is, you know, if we, if we are wildly successful in the future, we could find ourselves in a place where we do decide to reward those who stuck their neck out and invested, uh, right now. And so we're nothing's off the table, but we really wanted to put it forward to people at this stage, like, Hey, you're, you know, you're investing in this out of passion. You're buying a brick, you know, you're buying a brick with your name on it. (laughs) <laughs> on, you know, on the Disneyland walk of fame or whatever, this is yes. like your way to, to make your mark. And, and we do have a lot of cool perks that investors are going to get with the festival. So it I is know, going I, to feel like you're getting something special when we actually get to next year's event. So hopefully people yes. start feeling like their investment, uh, is paying off through those, through those, uh, investor kind of focused activities that we end up doing next year. Yeah. I just, I just believe in your mission of being so inclusive and welcoming to people of all different colors and nationalities and religions and just backgrounds. And, and that that was one of your core values. I love that when, you know, I believed in you guys as a team and everything that I heard about it, I was like, I just want to be part of this movement because this is important um, to Idaho. It is an economic driver and I believe in supporting and creating an environment where you, um, where, where we can support the arts um, and you guys have built just a, a great ecosystem. Thank you. So, uh, so how many more days is it up on WeFunder? Like how much longer can people take the time to say, Hey, I want to be part of this movement. Um, we're going to be winding things down about a month from now. So okay. people still have a little bit of time. Um, we're going to do, we're going to make sure everyone knows it's coming. So no one will be in the dark about missing the opportunity. Um, so yeah, we're, we're hoping we get a nice push here as we start to wind down the WeFunder campaign and start to ramp up uh, the ticket on sale for next year's event. Great. Great. And uh, for, um, for the artists that are out there, I know that you guys, um, like you said, kind of more institutionalized art for this year. You had the CCC grants where you um, will be sharing uh, what these artists and creatives have put together. Uh, when when is that event? You know, I'm not on the CCC committee. It's actually we're, we're, true for it's part of it, but it's not it's a project from several organizations. So Mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know what date they actually settled on for that. So that's okay. I know, I know that's coming up, but, um, all right. Well, anything else that you want to share with the audience, um, any input or advice as to our, our audience out there? 
Um, I would just say, especially for anyone who's interested in being a professional artist in Boise or maybe interested in getting into the business of, of music or nightlife or anything that um, Treeford actually has a lot of professional resources that we leverage um, at the festival every year. We don't market and promote them as much, but we do a lot of industry talks uh, and other events that are designed to help people curious about becoming music professionals um, learn more, talk to people who are in the, in the various aspects of the business. So um, just as a professional resource, that's a really good way, you know, to, to attend Treefort as a fan and go to shows and have fun. But then you can also during the day, learn a lot from uh, people who are in the industry. So I would encourage people to check those out. Um, and we're, we're, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we also roll out some digital content in that realm uh, over the next year. But um, for the time being, we're, we're still working on that. But that's probably the biggest thing uh, to take away from this talk is if you are curious about that tree fort, tree fort covers those bases as well. It's not just, you can do some professional development at tree fort. It's not just a party. And, and what, so uh, that, that brings up a great point. So uh, there's, there's tons of professional opportunities, uh, tons of, con you know, just ways to connect and partner with others. Um, the, the digital content, I'm just more interested in uh, just one last question around that. What, what, what do you mean by that? So we just have plans to, like right now, Tree Fort has, we have a kind of a bank of uh, videotaped uh, artist performances that we're releasing on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But uh, something that we've discussed with this, with these industry talks is trying to figure out how, you know, it's exactly what Boise Startup Week is doing. Looking at, mm -hmm. hey, we provide the service to students, to young people, um, to you know, we provide this, we provide this access to information that we've lost because of not being able to get together and gather. So we've just been having some internal discussions of like, Hey, if we were to do something uh, in the realm of the industry talks, like we're maybe rolling that out over the next year, it's pretty, we're still kind of in the idea phase. Cause as I'm sure, you know, it's a lot of work to put a digital event on too, but um, mm -hmm. it's something we've discussed. Great. Well, I appreciate your time today, Drew, and uh, I will look forward to seeing um, you at Tree Fort. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks. Yeah.